a trader like that. It's really, really hard to tell. Look, the blur, the blur airdrop was bigger than I think anyone expected. Um, I have not been farming tokens like a lot of people have. And in retrospect, I wish I was. Across my three wallets, I was able to get just under one and a half Ethereum. Nice. Um, yeah, which I which I converted to Ethereum at about 70 cents. I always sell too early, um, but I did. I converted to ETH. I actually then converted it to US dollars. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that considering that I haven't been trading a huge amount on my one wallet, I got 1,900 blur. On my other wallet, I got like 1,600. And then I got like 100 and something on my one wallet and nothing on my burner wallet. So, I mean, money for nothing, 1.5 Ethereum. Um, for someone who really has, I mean, I bought a couple of, of NFTs, I've sold a couple of good NFTs, um, but haven't done much. I think it's absolutely great. I don't think any of us were anticipating it to be as much as it was. Um, and in hindsight, 2020, I do think that all of us wish we had bought more. The the thing that's interesting here is, you know, with the value of the token at just about $1, currently, you're looking at a market cap of about $1.5 1, billion dollars which is quite impressive they are busy doing a raise at the moment um and they valued at if this raise goes through they will be valued officially at about a billion dollars um which is incredible to think it really really is but i do know of people who got millions of dollars there was about 10 people who got over a million dollars airdrop to them which is absolutely insane it's incredible it's amazing it's amazing to see do you think that uh, I saw Zeneca got I think up like promoted or something to some sort of director role? Do you think how much of a play do, or how much of how do I ask this? What is Zeneca doing? Like what is he doing all day? People love the dude. I haven't consumed enough of his content to know. I feel like enough about him. I have watched all his show. Like I love watching his show with Jamie every week that they do together, and I that's where I get most of my context on him as a person. But other than that, all I know about him is he dropped, obviously, the 333 Club, and for some reason, he's a prominent figure, but I don't know why, and I don't know what he's doing with Zeneca, Blur. Zeneca was very early um, uh, to the to Web3 and very, very early to NFTs. And admittedly, in the last year, he's taken a bit of a backseat. He's still, as you said, he does that that uh, show with Jamie once a week, um, and he does appear on some podcasts, but he used to be a lot, lot more active. He does have um, his own 333 Club. There's also the Zen Academy, which is another NFT, and they're busy building along there. Um, and he's, he's, he was or is, um, you know, on, on uh, the, blur, the Blur board, as well as a few other notable people. Um, yeah, but I mean, he definitely was an OG, you know, top shot days guy, knows NFTs very, very well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my synopsis of him. Cool. If anyone else knows any extra information as well, definitely throw it in the chat because I think I want to uh, interview him at some point. Uh, I just I literally just don't I didn't know anything. I didn't know the first thing about him. And so I guess I got to do some more research and find some some interviews that he's done. Yeah, he's definitely worth interviewing for sure. Very interesting guy in the space for sure. Um, so the blue airdrop went off very, very successfully, even though it was delayed. Finally, on the 14th of February, we came. They had such a nice uh, collection page, told a bit of a story, told how much you've traded. Um, and it really was was done pretty flawlessly. It really went off really incredibly well. Um, and to think that this amount was airdropped to, to users, there was also uh, some set aside to be airdropped to projects that launched on Blur, um, also some for the founders, um, but a big chunk of it did go into the pockets of the users. They, they very cleverly made it that this is airdrop number one. So that wasn't known yet. There were three sections to airdrop number one. And um, in when you claim those three sections, they then said, this was airdrop one, airdrop two was on the way. You should start listing, um, putting bids in. And for the next month or so, any listing or bids will be um, extra points that you get, um, which is quite interesting. So they definitely think for the future. Um, you know, the, the problem with directly incentivizing people with money, which is what, which is how they've gained this market, Market share is that you've got to continue incentivizing them with money and hopefully more money otherwise people can lose interest 
So scenario number one is people were incentivized financially to begin with, and they ended up using the platform as a result of that incentivization, but they ended up absolutely loving the platform. And now, regardless of what happens in the future with airdrops, they are going to continue using it. That's scenario mm -hmm. number one. Scenario number two is everyone's hating, not everyone, the person who we're talking about in the scenario hates using Blur. The only reason that person is using it is because of the um, airdrops. And if this next one is smaller, which it has to be just logically than the first one um, and then the next airdrop is even smaller or it doesn't exist they will slowly go away so those are the two scenarios but for now they have been able to take over OpenSea daily volume substantially like beat OpenSea and they are the only marketplace to date that is actually giving OpenSea a run for their money yep it's true dude it's true they pretty much took a gamble here and i think it works because a lot of people i know like blur as well a lot of people are pissed at x2y2 i saw x2y2 put out a tweet yesterday actually and they were like so there are the, the war of the marketplaces has started uh you know open sea blacklist blur blur blacklist everybody else blah 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 uh how about you come to x2y2 and <laughs> all the comments were like um talking about they're like you guys are the ones who started the zero percent royalty fucking war like what are you talking about and uh that's the issue dude like it's pretty much about user experience if you can make that seamless as fuck really good and then offer a massive incentive like this just to get used to it and get comfortable on it you pretty much if you wanted to get a good airdrop from this you really had to use this shit like a lot and i didn't yeah. have the time or like i don't i'm not a trader so i just don't care um but yeah Look, I'll, I'll be honest i'll be honest with you it's not my um favorite platform i prefer using OpenSea. um i think the benefit of it is um if you bulk listing bulk buying bulk selling that sort of stuff it's really cool obviously the fact that they only charge 0.5 percent royalty so started blue itself started charging zero royalty in the beginning but about a month ago it, the minimum is 0 0.5 compared to open 2.5 but then also certain collections don't the royalties aren't enforced on blue so there's definitely a saving there but as far as the actual user interface, obviously the trending in the top is the same pretty much everywhere. But when you actually go into it, and this I think is my burner wallet, if I'm not mistaken, when you actually go into it, accepting bids and things like that are not ideal. Let me just stop sharing for one second um, for me. But, you know, that's just personal preference. I think it's like more like a technical trading platform and some people love it. Um, but again, I mean, we've been saying that OpenSea should have done an airdrop or a token for so long. And I'm so, so happy that someone has come out, namely Blur, and said to them, look, guys, you're not doing it, but we're going to do it. And we're going to show you what happens. You didn't take advantage of doing it. This is what you could have achieved. Yes, you have to give $1 back, but you're going to make $10 for every dollar you give back. And I just I just think it's cool. I think there's someone who's come out and said to them what we've all been saying is, guys, come on, we spent a fortune with you guys. You made tens of millions of dollars a second sure. during the bull market. Where's our airdrop? And, and MetaMask better be careful because with Phantom uh, launching Ethereum, um, and MetaMask should do their airdrop, otherwise Dude. they also going to lose market share. MetaMask, MetaMask airdrop would be so unbelievably insane. Like, I don't, I could not even put a number on how much money some of these traders that we know of would make. And even you actually, yeah, you're a trader. I would make, uh, a, I would make a lot. I, 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 I've done, time. I've done hundreds of like close to three to 500 ETH uh uh on metamask buying let, let alone selling i mean over did since hear, beginnings did you hear about collabland uh yeah i, I did actually i think we're talking about it tonight yeah. hey let's go um so yeah let's not get too much into it but yeah just to talk about blue but they gave me one and a half ETH for free um so i want to give them a bit of air time which is quite cool um there's a random account i don't know which one it's not too random but there's my wolf boy from last week. So you can see this is how it generally is. Um, and then you can see the list price, where it's listed, the top bids, where, where you've got top bids. And obviously people are putting bids in left, right, and center to try and farm more of the airdrop. But it does have to be said that now that more people are playing this game, the airdrop per person is naturally gonna be less. Um, but yeah, still worth doing. But you could like select this for an example and accept the bid or list it and edit it. So let's just say if we wanted to just hypothetically, I want to choose one that's not listed. So let's choose my uh, Lazy Lion uh, Bungalow. So if you have a look over here, 
you can see you can specify uh, so 0.5 you can specify the royalty you want over there to give to blur you put your list price in here it shows you what you'll end up getting and if you had to do it on OpenSea, you'd get 59 Ethereum for a 66 ETH sale, whereas on Blur, you'll get 65 ETH um, by choosing to only pay that royalty and not having to pay the royalties for the collection. So that's pretty much a yeah, very basic overview. You can also list on other marketplaces through the Blur app if you want to. So you can choose what to list it on each marketplace and list it over there. And um, definitely very good for bulk listing, bulk buying, bulk selling. Not so good for me if I'm like looking to browse and I want to buy an NFT. I much prefer the interface of, uh, of OpenSea when I'm actually browsing for myself to be able to look at, okay, what do, well, Doodle's not a great example. I like mutants. What mutant do I want to look at? I much prefer... I mean, I've got to close all of this. Then it's pretty much open. See, once you close those two side things, yeah. but I just prefer this space.